Welcome to Fast Track Coaching. Ask Dane. This is the 95th episode of our broadcast, and we've been doing this for almost two years. We're coming up um, on our two-year anniversary on January 1st, and I'm really pleased to be here. Hi, Kristen Schuler. Hey, Brian. Um, hey, team. And thanks for everybody who's joining in. Um, people are going to be jumping on here in the next couple of minutes, which is standard fare. And for those of you who have never been to an Ask Dane before, I want to give you a little bit of context for what we're up to. Uh, this is a 30-minute conversation between myself and a guest around some area of uh, creativity or business that we think could help you. And uh, today's guest is my friend um, Jack Hollingsworth, or Photo Jack, as many of you guys know him as. And he's a relatively new friend, although he's been in and around the industry for a long time, both in stock photography and travel photography, and recently has uh, taken a huge interest in supporting and helping other photographers. Uh, I shouldn't say recently. He's he's. It seems like the other day he had about a thousand followers and now he has about 20,000 followers on Twitter, which makes me think he's creating a lot of value for a lot of different people in and around the industry. But uh, we'll bring on Jack in just a second. Uh, before that, though, I want to kind of orient you guys to get the most out of this time. The way it works is we're part of this, this vocal environment if you signed on at Ask Dane. And usually there's people who are either watching or they're, or they're participating. And if you're in kind of a spectator mode, my encouragement for you is to really consider um, getting out of the, the kind of standing back and watching mode and actually get on the field with us. And you'll, get, you'll find you'll get a lot more out of our conversation. The way to get out of the conversation, get into the conversation, is to click on the little light bulb in the lower right-hand corner and ask a question. So you can do that by um, uh, jumping on, uh, clicking, the, clicking the button and either signing in your video camera so you can join us on, on tape. Or if you want, you can just type in your question and we'll pull it up on screen. Uh, we take questions that we think are most relevant to the conversation that's going on and really we view it as a conversation. It's not just me and Jack, it's me, Jack, and you. And uh, you getting involved is, is up to you. Um, that's how it works. So uh, that's how we're gonna roll. Uh, before, without further ado, I wanna bring on my friend Jack. And hi, Jack, thanks for joining the conversation today. Thanks, Dane, thanks for having me. My pleasure. Uh, you know, hey, Jack, I'm gonna need you, to, if you don't mind, and this is always standard fare, if you can turn up your volume just a little. Sure. Um, and by the way, if you're in the uh, chat room and you guys have any comments on whether or not people can hear or not, uh, please let us know. Uh, thanks, Brian, for your comment about my, my cool microphone. I appreciate it. <laughs> uh, you t I, I'm told that people hear my lisps a little bit less with this thing. So, hey, Danny Mendoza, good to see you, man. Good chatting with you earlier today. Um, also, I am tracking the Twitter feed. So if you happen to, to Wolfman Dane, thank you. Um, if you happen to be, uh, on Twitter only, you can go ahead and uh, send the question by Twitter and we'll, I'll pick it up on the feed and, and just talk about it audibly, uh, if not pull it up on screen. By the way, for those of you who are curious as to why I am growing this kind of wannabe beard, um, it's partly because it's November and that's what we do in November uh, around these parts. Uh, the other part is I have Photo Jack on as my guest today and <laughs> and uh, although I, I am pretty insecure with the beard. Uh, <laughs> Photo Jack, you know, you gotta, you gotta hear this, Jack. It's funny when I first thought of actually having you on. When I first heard of you at the very beginning, I actually thought of Wolfman Jack uh, in the olden days of radio, and uh, you even had that growly voice. Excellent. And Excellent. if you could give us a howl, I would be really thrilled. Um, <laughs> yeah. Hey, James, good to see you here, first time uh, watcher. Appreciate it, um, and. Uh, Hopefully this conversation today is going to be good for a lot of folks. Um, it's a brief conversation, so I want to give you guys a heads up on that. So if you want to get in, please engage right away. But Jack, uh, one of the reasons why I wanted to have you on, and we talked about this off the air, both uh, for this week and for next week. And for those of you who are curious, next week I'm having uh, Mike Hanline, the, the president head honcho over at White House Custom Color. And the reason I wanted to have back-to-back -back weeks of people with uh, white or no hair, including myself with my own white hair, <laughs> is uh, I thought it'd be cool, especially around this time of Thanksgiving, to, to get some perspective. I think 2010 has been a tumultuous year, to say the least, for a lot of photographers and professional creatives. And uh, really, the last 24 months have been uh, arguably unprecedented in terms of an economic downturn, at least in this part of the country. And... Uh, it's not been easy for a lot of folks. And I've been enjoying a lot of sidebar conversations with colleagues and friends and both within our industry and outside our industry who have given me perspective uh, in my own kind of wrestling matches as to where I should be putting my attention and so forth. And I'm just wondering, Jack, as we get started, 
First off, can you introduce yourself a little bit? I, I said at the top of the hour that your background is in stock and travel and you're doing a ton of stuff. If you go to jackhollingsworth.com, you can see a lot of great opportunities coming up in 2011. But, but share a little bit about, first off, kind of what your background is, and then second, why in the world do you seem to care so much about photographers? Because it seems like you're spending a lot of energy uh, supporting what they're up to. Yeah. Well, good, 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 good question. Let me, let me, let me start um, kind of with my background, which simple is it for like thousands of photographers that sort of been, been in the business for 30 years, survived three recessions, started as an advertising editorial guy, did books, magazines, all that kind of stuff, did a little bit of stock in those days. And then over time, over the next two decades, I ended up doing lots of stock with less and less assignment work till about 15 years ago, I was doing nothing but commercial stock. But my commercial stock was in your high-end luxury lifestyle uh, with sort of an ethnic diversity twist and a world international twist. So my shoots really for the past 20 years have looked like high-end advertising shoots. Now, hmm. My, my critics say that I, I, you know, I see the world through rose colored glasses and I do. That's just, you know, I was born that way. I, I, I see the glass half full, not half empty because I believe uh, and I apply uh, what I what I preach. And that is if you manage the heart and mind game, you have a better chance of succeeding in this industry. Uh, my, I'm, I'm just like you guys out there, you guys and gals out there. I mean, I'm struggling for every buck. Uh, Strangely enough, even amidst all that, I don't think that there's ever been a more exciting time to be alive as a commercial photographer today. And for those really that have eyes to see and ears to really hear it, thank God that you're alive today. Hmm. Hmm. Well, let's let's get into it a little bit then, Jack, because I think that there's a lot of folks that are appreciating the sentiment behind that comment, but when it comes to their pocketbook or their circumstances, uh, it's tough not to be short-sighted. And and when you talk about this kind of eyes to see or ears to hear, and really that's the theme of our conversation today is perspective. And if you're watching or engaging in the conversation, my encouragement is for you to come up with questions around how can you, what are your own obstacles for getting good perspective on what actually is happening? Um, it's funny, just before today, today's show, my next door neighbor, two doors down, he's this pretty remarkable uh, business guy. He kind of buys and sells really cool high-end action companies. Um, and it sounds kind of odd to say it that way, but that is what he does. He's a, he used to be an investment banker. And um, we had this just kind of a heart-to-heart -heart about the, our circumstances and our times. And he just went to great lengths to say, uh, to, to kind of reorient and recalibrate some of my own thinking. So if you're watching this, Ask the kinds of questions that you think would help you get clearer or remove obstacles. Or if you don't know how to do that, ask what ask us about those particular obstacles because I think Jack may have something to say about it. But Jack, for 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 our purposes of our conversation right now, um, if you are indeed an optimist, and I can I can appreciate that, uh, what are you optimistic about? <laughs> like, let's name some things specifically and see if we can't well, uh, get, let, yeah. get a little bit more. Hand that, that, that's a good question. Let, let me first say that this is my third recession in 30 years as a career photographer. Maybe some would say even four. So I've been through this a couple times and I can tell you absolutely 100% from, 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 from deep sincerity and from the bottom of my heart, when you get to the other side of this, it's better. The case, it was better, bigger, and brighter every single recession. When I struggled through, when I looked for the positive, when I managed the heart and mind game, on the other side of this, it is brighter, better, and it, it's just good. Now, I I don't think, again, as I said earlier, I, you know, I, I struggle like everybody else struggles to earn a buck and to stay liquid and to be in business. And I don't think really I've ever been less liquid but here's the catch. I don't think I've ever been more happy, more focused, more, more centered, more crazy and passionate about photography than I am today. Um, I find mm. that uh, so, somewhat ironic, uh, but it's true. So I'm less liquid, but I'm happier. Hmm. Okay. Uh, and again, you're talking to somebody that basically has 
I lived a pretty luxurious kind of life for the at least for the past decade. I was a seven fi- figure uh, stock income earner, uh, and, and consistently year after years. And I can tell you right now, I'm making a lot less than seven figures. I'm making income that's uh, take take out a few of those zeros, and that's where I am. Uh, but again, I, I, I'm just I'm, I'm hopeful that the economy is coming back, that our industry is coming back, and that if you manage the heart and mind game, you stay patient, stay patient, stay true to your vision, stay true to your passion in your mission in photography, it's going to get better. Okay, well, let's uh, let's keep drilling down on that because if I'm hearing you right, part of what you're saying is you know trust me, you've seen this before. And I think that's actually that in and of itself is a huge message that I think a lot of folks who are maybe newer to the industry or have only seen an upside and haven't, you know, had a challenge like a, a serious like what does this all mean kind of challenge before now. Um, but I agree with you. There are these things are cyclical after experiencing these things once or twice. It can feel a little bit like, oh, OK, this is just a downturn and, and then there'll be an upturn. It's just it's been a really long downturn for a lot of people. Um, and I, I guess. There's a lot of folks where it seems as though like even four or five years ago, it was just kind of chic and easy to talk about, gosh, you know, become a voting photographer, become a portrait photographer, follow your passions. Mm -hmm. And there's less kind of idealism in the air and more of a pragmatism. Uh, And I'm playing the other side a little because I'm in line with with, with you. I, I, I have found that even the idea of having less metaphorically to eat, uh, it, it kind of brings us back to those hunting and gathering days of, you know, a sharp focus and we know that we're hungry and it's, it's not easy to get fat right now. It's, it's, um, there's a Darwinian fight in many of us that's kind of exciting. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, it does have a, a winnowing effect. Wouldn't you agree where there's some folks, not everyone is made for this game. And I'm guessing that, um, so, there has to be some kind of shakeout where it's not this idealistic, you know, if everyone follows their dream, they're all going to make it. Or is it? Or, you know, help me understand a little bit what would be a better perspective on, on the naysayers who are just a little discouraged and don't, don't really have the hope that you, you seem to have from your perspective. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, I agree with you, Dane. I think that there's a huge shakeout going on. And quite frankly, I'm, I'm happy for it. I'm positive about it because the people that cannot survive – um, if they if they can't in this economy in these tough times manage the heart and mind game and it's just not going to work then yeah maybe maybe it's time to think about another career but for those that kind of have stick to itness and a, a a sense of future and and hope and energy again I, I you know I hate to keep coming back to my own experience but I I can tell you from having been here at least twice maybe three times that on the other side of this, it is better, bigger, and brighter. And if you can kind of make it through there, manage the heart game, um, heart and mind game, you're gonna you're, you're gonna be you're gonna be a better photographer, um, a leaner photographer, a more focused, more productive, a more energetic, more visionary photographer maybe than ever before. It's a good thing, really. It's a good thing. <laughs> you know, I I, I trust again, me. I, I trust think... me. <laughs> um, it does seem like, oh, by the way, a couple of quick shout outs. Hey, Tracy Clark, good to see you and Shutter Sisters. I was just talking to someone about you guys today in Atlanta, Canada, of all places. Uh, good to see you on here. And um, uh, Anne McKinnell, I see you there. And I think Sashin hit the hay because it was too late where you're at. And I also see uh, Weezy Black, it's your first time here. And uh, James Photo, uh, really glad you're on, on the show today. Um, there's a sense, of, by the way, for those of you who don't know, I grew up in Canada, and in Canada we had a television show called Romper Room, and as a kid, it was so fun, because at the end of the show, the, 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 uh, the folks who were hosting this little kid's playtime would look into the camera and say, I see you, Johnny, I see you, Frank, I see you, Sally, and I used to think, like, he, they're going to say my name any minute, not knowing that they're just randomly saying boys' names and girls' names, and they never said Dana. I don't know what the deal was, but... Um, <laughs> This is actually real. How cool that we're in a season where this is possible. Uh, but that said, uh, you know, this, this uh, optimism and this hope and this kind of sense of s- stick with itness. I want to qualify that a little bit and just get your take on this. Um, I remember it wasn't too long ago where to join a professional photographer organization, 
uh, it was just a requisite that you had to log the majority of your time uh, taking pictures professionally, or you weren't considered uh, legitimate, or you weren't uh, truly a professional, unless you're a full-time photographer, whatever that meant. And it seems like on the heels of so much shifting with our perspectives around time, I think about books like uh, Tim Ferriss's Four Hour Work Week, where he's encouraging people to not work for work's sake, where it's not about measuring our value from time logged, but more results driven. Um, do you think that there's more room in our industry for the part-time photographer who is both avidly committed to our craft and enthusiastically after what we're doing, and at the same time uh, that they could, uh, from a part-time perspective, have a full-time commitment uh, from a professional's, as, as a professional? or or should we think about it in a different way? Because uh, th it seems like in these lean times when people are trying to kind of make it work, they're running around and they're getting clever. I mean, I have four kids. If I can't pay the bills doing this, I think I'll probably wash windows or pump gas or, and I'll do it with a smile on my face, even if I'm a janitor, if I'm feeding my kids, because there's no shame in that. But, but what about for the professional photographer who's living in this culture of expectation? How should they view our times and, and, and approach to this season? Well, I, I, I would certainly say, do, you know, to, to, to embrace that, I, you, you know me uh, from and any of you that are, you know, listening tonight and uh, listening to my spiel on Twitter, I, I, I embrace that amateur, that hobbyist, that weekend warrior agenda, just like I do the pro, because I don't see those as competitive spheres. I see those as complementary, uh, not combative, but uh, it, it's absolutely it's you know it's where it's going and i 100 percent support those that are making their living part-time i might add too and i i think that probably you know arrogance aside that i've been over the years or probably the past two decades one of the busiest photographers you know at least in my sector at least in my niche and that was commercial lifestyle stock photography and let me tell you something even at the height of my busyness, I wasn't shooting more than 20, 25% of the time. So 75 to 80% of my time was involved in non shooting tasks. That is, that's even, that, that's not only true today. I, I shoot less today than I did, you know, a year ago, obviously, because of the economy and the industry. So, you know, the, isn't this that whole true though? Of, isn't of, that true of all industries? I mean, it seems like, yes. like in medicine, there's only so many hours that they're actually practicing in, in psychology. I remember I, I, encount, I went to counseling when I was in college and I remember a full roster for my friends who were practicing counselors was 15 to 20 clients. You couldn't, that, you, there's no way you could maintain more than that in a given Absolutely. week. Uh, uh, so, but, but why, why do we have this expectation that no, 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 you're not full time unless you're full time. <laughs> or you're not professional unless you're full time. Why, why are we so, why are we so stuck in that idea? I, I have no idea, but I wish we'd over ourselves very very quickly you know and embrace yeah. the the amateur and the pro agenda and come together with a sort of a combined agenda because that's where we're going to find success and we're going to find solutions to the, some of the challenges that we face hmm. okay so let's take a couple questions here um my buddy um, danny mendoza asked the question uh, where do you see the industry heading in the next 10 years ups downs pros and cons it's a good question what do you think up, 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 up. <laughs> you know, I mean, there, there is, there is, there is absolutely unquestionably going to be a need for people to take pictures. As a matter of fact, never before in the history of photography has there been a larger appetite for commercial pictures. Think about that. Never before hmm. in the history of photography has there been a larger appetite for commercial photographs than there is today. Now, again, mm -hmm. a lot of those are selling for a buck or, you know, they're being given away or, sure. you know, they're, they're, they're licensed under Creative Commons. The list goes on and on. But the fact of the matter is we live in a visual culture and the need for photography is as strong today as it's ever mm -hmm. been ever in history. So your job is to find out how you fit into that future picture. Photography is not going away. I'm not going away. Dane, you're not going away. The listeners are <laughs> going away. So how do we, how do we fit in? How do we fit in and make it work? See, okay, so, so I love that on a number of fronts because it seems as though, uh, you know, another way to describe a similar idea is, you know, creativity is not going out of style anytime soon. 
And if you treat a, a new frame for how I've begun talking about what I do for a living is that I don't see myself as a professional photographer. I see myself as a professional creative. And what I mean by that is that if I happen to have a camera in my hand, it's my job to treat it professionally and, and to enthusiastically go after creating cool stuff. And if I have a, a, a typewriter in my hand or a, a computer and I'm writing something, then my writing is where I do that. Or if I'm giving a workshop or sitting on the couch talking with somebody, uh, having a cup of coffee, whatever, it's my job to creatively engage. If I'm running a business, I need to treat it creatively. Um, but this, I, this category of professional creative I, one of the reasons why I like that idea is I got this picture in my head, and I'm curious what you think about it, Jack, where it seems to me like the person who's going to, the person or people or movement that's going to really take the next wave, I have a hunch they won't categorize themselves as photographers at all. That what they'll categorize themselves, I don't know what they'll name themselves, they're going to be way cooler than I can imagine, but they're going to somehow be able to combine multiple mediums and come up with something clever. And it won't be as simple as just, you know, film and moving film. I have a hunch it'll be a combination of things like music, uh, like um, uh, any kind of medium that moves people or transfers people. And, and to that end, it's, it seems like I could see there being a lot of um, value in just pausing and saying, gosh, what else could I be creative with? What else is in my hand? And to informing the next 10 years. Like I, I love your question, Danny, because I, I like being a futurist, but part of me wants to go, well, what if it wasn't going to be defined outside of me, but what if we were going to define the next 10 years? If it was on us to do that, you know, what are we going to do? Uh, and that idea gets me pretty excited. And I'm, I'm curious if, if Danny, if you were on the show, uh, how you would answer your own question. What are you going to do to contribute in the next 10 years with the tools that you have available to you that could really open something up for a lot of people? Um, I need to mention really quickly that there are a lot of questions that are beginning to pop on. James and Weezy, I see you there. I see a video question coming on. And uh, Brian Tremblay, who normally asks video questions, I'll bring you on in just a second because I love your question about the economy and saturation. Uh, but before I do, I just want to give you guys a heads up to keep the flow of the conversation going so there won't be any time delay. I'm going to bring Brian on, and as soon as you're done asking your question, Brian, I'll drop the call just so that we can kind of jump back on and, and not have any breaks in the delay. And by the way, I hope you guys have noticed there's a lot less of a delay this time, and that's because our friends at Vocal have done a really good job to improve the quality of what we're bringing to you guys, and I hope you're, you're appreciating that. And if you are appreciating it, uh, feel free to give a shout-out on Twitter to at Vocal for uh, all their hard work. And uh, just as another reminder to Jack or at Dane Sanders, uh, no one gets upset with you if you say nice things on Twitter. Um, but let's take a couple more questions here. First, there's Brian Tremblay. Um, here, I'll pull Jack up, uh, and then I'll add the broadcasted call. So, Brian, are you there? Hey, Dane, how you doing? Do, doing great. Hey, Jack. Hey, Jack. Go ahead. And ask well, question, I'm going to be. It's. <laughs> this is either going to come across as a grumpy photographer question or the devil's advocate question, but. Um, is it less, Jack, about economy and more about saturation? Um, the way I kind of su surmise this is people come up to me all the time and say, how's business? And I say, wonderful, everyone's doing it. Um, so in, <laughs> in the face of rising tide of everybody wanting to become a photographer, how does a guy like me, you know, who well, anybody, never mind just me, I'm a small town photographer. How do they differentiate themselves from, from, from everybody? You know, take, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm stumped. It's a great, it's a great, it's a great question, Bryce. So jump on, Jack, go for it. Yeah, let me, let me, let me, let me give you uh, an answer that I seem to give regularly, and you may not like my answer, um, but, I mean, it's a million dollar question. It's a great question, Brian, you know, how to differentiate, how to differentiate yourself, how to become a brand, how to, how to develop unique selling propositions that separate you from the pack. And this is, this is what I know. This is what I know from 30 years of successful commercial uh, photography experience that, that today's photographer, which is different than a couple of years ago, five years ago, 10, 15 years, that today's photographer with say average or even modest technical skills, but high, listen to me, marketing, business, 
promotion and social media skills is hands down going to do better almost 100 percent of the time is going to do better than a photographer who has h high technical skills but little to no marketing business promotion and social media skills so the the point of differentiation yes is it photography yeah maybe in some in some sense but the differentiation is you have to create it and that's going to come through unique marketing unique promotion um, unique social media connections and involvement with communities that's helpful it's fun there's this is a multi i'm not a very good multitasker but there's so many great conversations i see conversations on twitter where people like chelsea morning are commenting about uh, a lot of people see what you're describing like the progression of photography as a trend something that will suddenly expire rather than something will evolve we need to change that and i agree with you, chelsea uh, and then in the forums i'm hearing people talking about um, the kind of a little bit of a blame game. Like my friend Katrina makes a comment about it's the grumpy spreading this bad idea and, um, uh, everyone's different. Just leverage your differences is what Kristen Schuler says. Um, and, and in the middle of all these kinds of assertions and debates and commentary, um, I like what you're saying, Jack, it's in, there's a sense in which away from what the pundits say, some joker on an internet television show saying what we th we're saying right now. At the end of the day, it really comes down to what's happening in reality. So how I am with my neighbor, how I am with my clients, what am I willing to create in my garage? Um, how can I find a way to break through um, and get committed to that seems to be, at the end of the day, it's the proof's in the pudding, um, which is why so many people, um, you know, when they, when they think that social marketing or the next flavor of the week idea, that somehow that new tool is going to be the trick that turns it, it probably isn't it's it seems to me it's more what we do with those tools what we do creatively with those tools that Absolutely. would make a difference would you agree would you agree you're 100 and, and that's why i'm so fond uh and and, and all you that are listening to me to say this but dane that's why i'm fond of your you know fast track photographer message uh, i think you're one of the few guys that actually has addressed sort of being a photographer or uh, focus on the photographer rather than the photography, the, the process rather than the product. And I think in that lies exactly what I'm talking about, that future success in commercial photography is going to in large part depend not on what you know, but who you are and apply that unique visionary marketing promotion, social media strategy to whatever level of photography you're at and you're going to do well i promise you you'll do well i mean it's an exciting well, time like to be it. alive in it you know it's it, it's our time yeah period it's our time well, brother it, it is our time yeah there is something to that i mean if you guys haven't had a chance to read dan pink's book a whole new mind where he basically makes the case that it is that finally the creative concept the conceptualist side uh, kind of moment to shine uh if you're that kind of person you're, you're right but I think it's also important to note that, that none of this guarantees a, a payment. I think one of the mo things that I'm noticing about our, our industry is, yeah, it's, it's never been easier to be a creative, to assert ourselves, but it also comes at a time where stereotypically, you know, the, all, all these kids that are grown up on digital, and I feel like a late blooming kid on digital, but um, there's the stereotype is that, you know, we live in a culture of entitlement that, gosh, if I'm doing what I, sh what I love, I should get paid. And that, that, that there really isn't, um, those two aren't necessarily hand in hand, but we do, if we're willing to scramble and live off, you know, food stains on our tablecloths and uh, top ramen at the, uh, you know, on good days, um, we actually can have a possibility of making a living where in previous generations, you know, it just wasn't, you didn't get to do what you love. You just went to work. And that's where it, it seems like there's a lot of uh, missed opportunity if people are waiting for a paycheck or a lifestyle as opposed to you know, like, no. You can't not create whereas before this just wasn't possible. Um, I, I, I no, love you, some you, of these comments. You, 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 Go ahead. 
You you also have to deign, you know, and I'd be the first to admit, and I'm sure you would agree that I mean, your photography has to pay off all those things. So, you know, I'm not suggesting right. you be a, a a schlocky photographer, you know, with That's great, right. you know, social marketing and promotion skills, and you do well. Maybe you will, maybe you won't, but there's a better chance of succeeding if you have average to above average photography skills and above average all the other skills. You have a better chance of succeeding in this networked <laughs> relational economy than ever before in ever That's in right. any time in history. Okay, so here's an honest question that I think doesn't get addressed enough, and I'm just going to pull it up here, and I don't even know where we're going to go with it. But Weezy Black asked the question, how long did it take you guys to start profiting once you started your business? And I think this, <laughs> this actually gets to the heart of the question because it's uh, profit is a funny thing. But I'll let you answer first, Jack, and then I'll give my own commentary. Hmm. Well, you know, yeah, it is a funny question because I, I was privileged, uh, you know, to have a wife at the time um, who was a surgical nurse. So, uh, you know, I lived kind of on her good graces for a couple of years while I built the business. I'd say, you know, I brought in money almost immediately, uh, but I don't think that, uh, you know, on any kind of spreadsheet, I saw any sort of solvency until probably about the third year. Now, again, we're talking 30 years ago, so it's kind of a long time to remember, but I don't think I started putting money in the bank or in my pocket till about year three. Hmm. I think in my situation, uh, candidly, I think everyone's path is unique, but when I first started in photography, I had a full-time gig. I was a, um, a teacher at a college, and, and because I had that, in fact, I had an opportunity to charge prices that were higher because I had less time. I had, in a sense, I had less of a need for money and more and less time on my hands. So it allowed me to expedite and jump in a little quicker. Um, but that said, uh, the bigger question is, um, well, it actually it's in the question is profit. It's funny, just this past week, I or two weeks ago, I had the, my biggest portrait sale of my career. Um, and it was, uh, I was thrilled. It was $7,300 for a portrait session. and. Um, but it was actually at over a $10,000 portrait session, but I gave away like $3,900 worth of a discount out of my fear because I was so overwhelmed by how big of a price tag this was. I was scared to take that much money. And, uh, and that's just purely honest when I say this. And I had a chance to call my friend Julia Woods, who is a bit of a coach to me in a lot of ways around the, uh, running my photo business. And, and she immediately like chastised me. And I'm sitting here going like, Julia, let's celebrate the good things here. Like this is the biggest sale of my life. I've never done this before in a single you know, portrait session. And uh, she just said, yeah, yeah, but don't be satisfied with that. And, and I guess that's the part, Weezy, in your question that I'm just really struck by is starting profiting is not the point. It's, it's not profiting in a, in a particular moment or in a particular year. It's getting into a position where we get to do what we love, but also build on it and build a, a foundation to stand from. And, and even today for me, like I, I do run this photo business, but I'm really, I wrestle with it because I also travel and speak, so that means that every time I go to travel and speak, I shut this business down, I go and travel and speak, I come back and I resurrect it and I do it over again and again and again, and it's exhausting. And I, I, don't, I don't know how long I'll be able to kind of keep doing the, both these games. One might have to give, who knows? But I do know that I have to profit and to keep doing it. And mm -hmm. if I'm not, I don't get to. I'm feeding four kids and a dog and, and my wife. and and uh and me once in a while and to do that mm -hmm. requires a kind of a, a consciousness to profitability paying the bills and more than that and i think more photographers could be would be wise to value what they're offering at a higher level but there is there is a degree to which you have to pace yourself and not expect that you're going to make all of your money instantly that's uh, that's an unfortunate um misunderstanding that this is quick and easy money that's that's not the case uh, like any industry in especially in a down economy What's required is for you to build value and continue to build value over and over and over again so that you're not even just rewarded, you're, you have something to stand on. You have a, a, a community of people in your local area that, and beyond that, that will stand behind you. And if that's in play, I think you'll not just start profit quickly, but you'll, you'll end up um, being able to stay profitable. And that's what I, I'd love to see the question is, how do I stay profitable, <laughs> not just start? Because I think money can come in relatively quickly, but maintaining it is a, is a tougher game uh, because we're late on time I want to bring up a couple more questions if that's okay with you Jack um, let me yeah, sure. uh, make this move here um, uh, James asked the question uh, I keep being told that weddings are recession proof what do you think and I'll put you in the hot spot first Jack and then I'll let me go first and I'll let you go second 
I think people are getting married uh, regardless of the recession, but the wedding business might be a different story. I'm curious what you think, Jack. Well, I, first of all, I don't think that there's any niche anywhere in the world that is recession proof. There are many niches that are recession resistant, and maybe the wedding industry is one of them. But you know, they're 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 struggling. Uh, the photographers, the guys and the gals that are wedding full time wedding photographer, part time wedding photographer, are struggling. So I don't think there's any th any such thing. Uh, anymore and probably won't be for another two two or three years any such thing as a recession proof niche but there are plenty of recession resistant niches uh, that you'd be smart to pay attention to and maybe well I would say wedding is one of them hmm. that's great uh, let me uh, I'm jumping around to a few things here uh, Katrina asked a question um, and this is a loaded question but I, I, I appreciate her, her candor in it she says Bring it back to your response about being a better business person. What do you suggest? Like, how do you how do you do that? And um, I have some comments on that, Jack. But if, if if you you know you're talking to somebody at a, at a WPPI or a Photo Plus or someplace, and they come up to you and say, "Hey, I I I'm clear on my abilities creatively, uh, but I need to become better at business." Uh, what are some of the first steps you would kind of recommend for them? Yeah, right right off my head, four things. One, I, I would I would not walk to the store. I would run to the store and buy fast track photographer. Number two, <laughs> uh, I would join. I would join a. I would join an association like ASMP, American Society of Media Photographers. Number three, I would pull out my wallet and spend twenty or twenty five bucks on John Harrington's. Uh, I don't know. It's called like best business practices for photographers. You can you can Google it or Amazon it, and you'll find it. Great. And then uh, you know, for spend as much money on professional development, you know, targeted business workshops as you do on those new pieces of glass that you buy and lust over constantly. Yeah, that's fantastic. I I, uh, I appreciate that every time because I get embarrassed by it, but. I actually shouldn't get embarrassed. I should say, yeah, what Jack said, buy my book because it, it would actually be helpful for my children. But um, uh, the, along those lines, I, on, the, on the heels of running Fast Track, because um, really Fast Track is, uh, Seth Godin called it a, a photography book that's not about photography. It's really about the photographer. And I really wanted it to help a lot of people, but I did get on the heels of that versions of Katrina's questions on a number of fronts where they said, okay, that's great. I'm clear on who I am as a photographer. Now what? I kind of dipped my toe in planning, but now what? And um, I did write a whole other book in this direction, Katrina, just to help in this way. And it's coming out on December 14th. It's called the Fast Track Photographer Business Plan. And it's meant just for that purpose. Uh, there's a link to it on the pre-order on the Ask Dane site. And I'd be honored if you'd consider taking a look. It does a couple things. Um, it speaks to all photographers across all genres. And, and in that, there's actually, a, there's even a, another assessment some the pdna which was in the first book the photographer dna that asked you a bunch of questions to figure out your particular strengths as a professional creative and, and how to maximize them this new book uh, has a, a test in it called the business stress test where if you're going in for it gives your business a stress test regardless of where it's at and it gives you a description and a prescription on uh, kind of what are some practical very concrete things you can do today to improve and uh, I, I'd really, I'd be honored if you, if you'd, uh, if you'd take a look at that. And if it's not worth the eleven dollars on Amazon, let me know. Uh, but it's, it's my best take at answering your question, and I, I hope it's helpful um, as we move forward. Um, hey, Dane. Hey, Dane. Yes, yes, sir. In, in, in addition to that, this is not a plug for me. Uh, I make no money on the affiliate, but this is on my desk. Uh, this is. Uh, this is a path to a business plan by Strategy oh, Avenue. And yeah. I just happen to have it on my desk. There's a whole bunch of DVDs. This is really about kind of developing a, uh, you know, developing a strategy, building a vision, targeting your marketing, That's right. uh, doing promotion. You know, it's a great module. What's great about that is um, a week or two ago, we had my friend Laura Novak on the show, and Laura Novak is Laura. The person behind Strategy Avenue, and she came up with that exact curriculum. So, uh, I think that's a fantastic plug, and uh, I, I would highly recommend it. Another resource I'd recommend that I've been using a lot lately, and I already mentioned her earlier, is Julia Woods' uh, DVD called Out of the Woods, which helps mm -hmm. people with 
pricing and sales, uh, in particular around the portrait uh, and wedding world. And uh, her DVD can be found at theneedforchange.com. Um, mm -hmm. But I think there's so many great resources out there, and I don't mean to just endorse mm -hmm. one, one in particular. But uh, whatever you do, pick one and get after it. Uh, it's probably mm -hmm. less about you not having access to the resource and, and more about you're not employing the resource. Uh, and mm -hmm. I would, I don't care if you pick mine or somebody else's, pick somebody's and do it and get some results. So then at least you can figure out what the next step will be. Um, you know, we are already over time and I just want to make, take a couple, just one more question here. Um, uh, Dan asked this question. I think this is a great question for you in particular, Jack, uh, because you have done so much online, uh, in recent, um, in recent years. But, uh, Dan asked the question for photographers who primarily shoot for local clients. How can they use the web to grow their business? What do you think? Well, um, that's a good question, Dan. Let, let me also say, Dan actually just came out with a, I, I noticed on Twitter and tweeted it, but uh, if you, I think you go to danbaileyphoto.com or something like that, Dan. Forgive me for not knowing that, but he just came out with an ebook about how to become a professional photographer. It's 27 pages. It's like nine bucks. It's worth a read. I'm reading it as we speak. Uh, lots of lots of goodness and uh, goodies inside. So Dan, good job on that. But yeah, I, I I think I think the market is going local, and I think Dane probably can attest that even in his business, yeah. his portrait and wedding wedding business, yeah. that the same principles of social media strategy and networking apply internationally nationally, regionally, and locally, you know, maybe uh, you've used a few different tools, maybe a couple different technologies, but it's the same spin. And I think for over the next 24 months, my gut tells me that your money is primarily going to come locally. That's cool. I'm putting up a couple of links right now in the forum so that people can have a chance to, um, if they want to, uh, I can't do two things at once um, to check out a couple of resources there there for you guys to see. But uh, I appreciate appreciate you you saying that and um, and I think you're right. There's there's a degree to which um, every business is local. Uh, the internet just made the whole world local because um, we can now have conversations and uh, it, just like all politics are ultimately local. It's it just comes down to re forget the tools, forget all the internet baloney how wherever you go are you an invitation to people to want to do business with you uh -huh. and if you do that everywhere you go all the time and you happen to have a tool that broadcasts to the planet in the process guess what a lot more people are going to know you and want to do something with you so um, I would encourage you Dan to, to make it less about how to make use the web to grow your business but how do you engage people on a local level even if you're on the web or even if you are in, it's a mindset. And I, I and Jack, honestly, what you said at the, at the top of this conversation around um, your way of being is more important than what you do, or some, you said some version of that. I, I couldn't affirm that more. Mm -hmm. I think that that really is the future of, of this idea of being a professional creative. And it is less about what I do and what I, how I, how I am everywhere I go with whatever I'm doing. And I have a hunch if, if more and more people embrace that mindset and get a little just less freaked out about all of our circumstances. Mm -hmm. I think we'll see as these, these cycles go in and out, uh, the world will not come to an end. No one's going to go to jail for going poor. You may not be able to eat at a really mm -hmm. fancy restaurant, uh, mm -hmm. but you're going to, you're going to be okay. Pay your taxes. You might want to work that part out. Um, mm -hmm. but the good news is if you don't make much money, you probably don't have to pay much taxes. So, uh, in all of it, my encouragement for you guys is just to kind of stay the course, breathe deep, um, uh, as best you can and and let's just let's just be patient through this process and, and be thankful going into Thanksgiving I think that's appropriate uh, Jack I'm gonna give you the last word and then I'm gonna come back and sign off but I do want to remind folks that next week I will have Mike Hanline from White House Custom Color if for those of you who don't know Mike he's, he's a hero to me and somebody that I see as a, a remarkable leader who's seen a lot of highs and lows uh, both in his own career and also in in, in America and he's someone that I, I think we would be wise to pay attention to. So if you get a chance to share with folks that you don't want to miss next week's show before Thanksgiving, uh, please, please get the word out on that. Um, but, but Jack, any kind of final words or kind of knowing what you know now, what you would advi advise or give to folks as a, as, a, as a gift, as a shot in the arm 
to help them uh, just be a little encouraged this week as they move forward and, and try to move the needle of their business. What, what are your thoughts? Uh-huh. Well, I, first of all, I'm, I'm, I'm more fired up now than when we started this conversation. So I'm going to get off the phone and I've got <laughs> three, or, three or four things myself to follow up on. I mean, that's how excited I am about photography. And I'm, and I'm not joking. This is our time. This right now, today in history, is our time. This is the crossroads. This is the crossing. This is the intersection. This is our time. When we get through to the other side, we're going to be encouraged. So, Dane, you keep doing what you're doing. I see all kinds of friends. I see all my girlfriends over there at Shutter Sisters and Tracy Clark. A big shout out to them. I love what they're doing in their community. Dan Bailey, one yeah. of the greatest bloggers, uh, I, I think, around. So, a great resource, and the list goes on and on. So, Thanks for having me as a guest and, you know, thank you. Great. Well, that's it for now, you guys. We'll see you guys next week with Mike Handline. Uh, Be an encouragement to the people. Be the change you wish in other people's lives. If you could give a shout out to Jack and follow him at Photo Jack, that would be great. I always appreciate when you guys uh, follow Fast Track Photo or at Dane Sanders. And and by the way, just a little teaser. uh, In the new year, it's looking like we're going to have a new show that's going to be coming out. We're actually going to call it Fast Track Coaching, and it's going to be what we do right now with Ask Dane. And the Ask Dane moniker, we're actually going to finally ask Dane something. We're, and it's a whole other talk show we're going to set up in the new year. I'll tell you about later. Uh, but um, awesome. people laugh. When I started this game, Jack, I had a show called The, the Simple Photo Minute that was never simple and never a minute. Uh, so I'm hoping that we can get more in line with what we're offering. So uh, that's it for now. But uh, thanks, everybody. And thank you, Jack, especially for being on the show. It's always an honor to be around you. And I, I hope we get a chance to keep working together. Sounds good. Thanks. Bye, everybody. <laughs>